It's Sunday, August 9, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I am aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga. Today what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the boat. Where it was built, how big it is, what its specifications are, and uh, a little bit about what I have done to the boat. This is a companion video to the boat tour that I put out earlier today. So, let's talk Tortuga. As you can see, I'm sitting in the upper cabin on Tortuga, which is a very pleasant place to be, particularly in the evening. Last night, we motored up to Somme Sound and spent the night, and it was really nice sitting up here watching the stars and just enjoying the sights. Because, as you can see, we have unlimited visibility via the 19 windows in this cabin. Let's talk a little bit about Tortuga. Tortuga was built in 1936 in Sausalito, California, right across the bay from San Francisco. It was built by a company called Nunes Brothers Boat and Ways Company. And they were wooden boat builders uh, and had been working there for about 15 years at the time they built Tortuga. The company continued building boats into the 50s when it finally went out of business, when fiberglass boats basically started coming in. Now, Tortuga is what's called a raised deck cruiser. As you can see in this picture, what that means is the foredeck is raised to accommodate a large lower cabin with full standing headroom, and then there is a cabin house aft. And the bridge is in the upper cabin and is not elevated. If the bridge was elevated above the level of the upper cabin, it would be a bridge deck cruiser. But this is just a raised deck cruiser. This particular boat, as far as I can tell, is a 90% copy of a boat built in Seattle in the 20s called a Blanchard 36. All of the dimensions, the hull form, everything, basically appears to be the same as a Blanchard 36. It's just scaled down to 90%. I don't know the designer, but I think it might have been a Pacific Northwest yacht designer named Ted Geary who did move to California in the 30s to continue designing. So, but that's not definite, that's just a guess on my part. I have never seen the actual drawings for the boat which would have the designer's name on them. I have not been able to find any information about the designer. So I'm just going by it looks like other Geary boats from that period, but could just be a copy of his boats. Okay, what are the dimensions? Well, Tortuga is 32 feet 3 and a half inches long. That's uh, the length I get when I stretch my 50 foot tape measure out from bow to stern. It has a waterline length of 32 feet a draft of 2 feet 9 inches, and that's the draft at the aft end of the keel, right at the rudder uh, attachment point. It's uh, less as you go forward, so it's quite a shoal draft boat. The boat does have a full length keel that extends below the hull. The beam of the boat is 9 feet 5 and a quarter inches. Again, that's my measurement with the tape. And that is from the trim outboard of the hull on one side all the way to the other side at the widest point in the boat. If I just went from the top of the hull to the top of the hull on the other side of the boat, it would be two inches narrower. So, depending on who you, where you want to measure it, nine foot three to nine foot five. So those are the principal dimensions of Tortuga. Uh, the boat displaces approximately 9,000 pounds. That is uh, down from the displacement when I got it, which was about 10,000 pounds, but I took a lot out of the boat. 
after I got it, which reduced its weight quite substantially by approximately 10%. So, what about other aspects of the boat? I don't know what this boat was originally powered with. There's the engine that was in it when I acquired it was a 1948 vintage Chrysler Crown Flathead 6, and I do not know what it replaced. However, when I bought the boat, it had been sitting for about five years outside just with a, a cover over the cabin house, but the whole boat was not covered. And just from moisture uh, in the air, that uh, engine was seized up. I put a breaker bar on the uh, main drive shaft at the front of the engine, about a three foot breaker, and I could not move it. So I'm pretty sure that it, you know, it was just had some rust in the cylinders and wasn't going anywhere. I imagine I could have put some oil in the cylinders, let it soak for a while, and then uh, gotten it to turn over. That probably would have uh, damaged the cylinders a little bit, and I might have been looking at a re. Anyway, the Chrysler Crown Flathead 6 is a gas engine, and I'm not a big fan of gas on boats. So one of the first things I resolved to do when I got the boat was to take that engine out and replace it with a small diesel, which I did. And the current power for Tortuga is a Volvo Penta D240 diesel engine. It's a small four-cylinder diesel, and it produces 39.6 horsepower. Now that's plenty of power to drive this boat the way it's propped right now, up to just over nine knots of wide open throttle, which is 3,000 RPMs. And the boat cruises very comfortably at 2,000 RPMs and seven knots, burning about five-eighths of a gallon of fuel an hour. And if I slow down to 1,550 RPMs, which is where we normally cruise the boat, it goes about 5.4 knots, but only burns about a quart an hour. So it's a very economical boat to run. 5.4 knots on a quarter an hour is uh, 21.6 nautical miles per gallon, which is pretty much 25 statute miles per gallon. So it's you know, pretty good gas mileage, if you will, or diesel mileage. Um, what have I done to the boat? Well, I have done a lot to it over the years. When I bought the boat, there were a couple of planks missing on the bottom, and when I got down there to look at the frames where those planks had been, I discovered that the frames down there were in really terrible shape. I could just drive the screwdriver right into them with my hand, no problem. So when I bought the boat, I knew that I was going to have to do a good deal of work on the boat. So. But that, of course, is one of the reasons I bought this particular boat, and I did not pay much for it. But I bought it because I wanted to do a project on an old wood boat. The other reason I bought this boat is that when I was an undergraduate at the University of Washington in Seattle, I lived across the ship canal from the university, and I used to walk over to the university every day across the university bridge. And since that's a drawbridge, now and then it would be open and I would have to wait for the bridge to close again before I could continue across. And I would look around at the water under the bridge. And there were a couple of boats very similar to this moored at docks down underneath the bridge or right next to the bridge. And I sort of fell in love with the design and said, wow, someday I'd like to have a boat like that. Well, nearly 50 years later, uh, I was checking through wooden boats for sale on Yacht World, and I came across this boat for sale in Brooklyn, Maine, which is about an hour and 15 minute drive from here. So just out of curiosity I decided to take a look at it. I called the broker up, 
found out exactly where it was, and went over and took a look at the boat. Well, I fell in love with the boat, and over my wife's objections, I bought the boat for very little money, and had it trucked over to my house, where I started working on it. And I worked on it for four years before we launched it the first time. So what did I do to it? In addition to there being a couple planks missing and some of the frames being rather punky, I discovered that the forward end of the keel for about seven and a half or eight feet was badly rotted. So I set out to do repairs. One of the first repairs I did was to cut off the rotted part of the keel and build a new piece and uh, bolt it in. Well, that took a little while. It was kind of a scary thing to do to cut a chunk of the keel of the boat off. And of course, in do it, to do that, I had to disconnect all the frames from the keel, but, but that was necessary anyway because the bottoms of those frames, basically from about the waterline down, were in terrible condition. So as part of the keel repair, I cut off all the frames that landed on the part of the keel I was rebuilding about 10 inches above the waterline where the wood was still sound and I scarfed in new frame ends which I laminated uh, to replace those bad frame ends. And then I got to work on the hull. I took off the garboards which are the first planks next to the keel on either side and discovered that the frames down in the bottom of the boat were pretty much uniformly bad for the full length of the boat. So I started opening things up. Because the foredeck on this boat had been fiberglassed by a previous owner, and I have no idea when that was done, there were no covering boards which would normally cover up the ends of the frames and you could remove the covering boards and get access to the frame base. But since there were no covering boards I would have had to cut into the fiberglass deck which as far as I could tell was in very good shape. I didn't want to do that so I uh, took the next best option. I gutted the interior of the boat. I removed the entire interior down below and I gutted everything I could here in this part of the boat. And then I proceeded to reframe the boat with laminated oak frames. And uh, that was a big job. That included rebuilding the engine compartment and everything forward. And the frames at the aft end of the boat weren't in that bad a shape, although I did sister a couple of them. Uh, they're still in the boat, but the old frames are gone and uh, in most of the boat. So I rebuilt those and then I set out to uh, repair the hull. I replaced all of the wood I had taken off the hull with new wood. And Tortuga, I should say, has white oak frames and is planked with Douglas fir. So I had to source Douglas fir to plank the boat and uh, source white oak to build the new frames, which were laminated with West System G-Flex epoxy. So that's uh, the main structural repairs that I did to the hull. And then, since I had gutted the interior, uh, the interior you saw in my boat tour was built by me starting in about uh, 2010. I also, as I mentioned before, replaced the engine and dropped in a small Volvo Penta diesel. I did retain the propeller and the propeller shaft, uh, although because of the significant change in the power of the engine and the RPM operating range, I had the propeller repitched and trued to uh, be appropriate for the new engine's uh, total power and RPM operating range. So that was what I did before I put the boat in the water. 
Once I got the boat in the water, I discovered that the side decks aft and the aft deck were leaking, letting water in, rainwater basically, and also the cabin house leaked terribly. When I discovered that the cabin house and side decks were leaking, and the leaking cabin side decks were letting fresh water run down the inside of the planking, which tended to rot the planking out from the inside of the boat, which was leading to having to replace a lot of the planking on the top sides in particular, I decided to re replace the cabin house and the side and aft decks. The old decks were built from Alaskan yellow cedar and they were traditionally laid. Um, I decided I didn't want to have to worry about deck leaks, so when I ripped out the old decks after I cut the cabin house off with my sawzall, I uh, rebuilt the decks with uh, Douglas fir framing and then uh, two layers of marine plywood that are epoxied together and then uh, a layer of 10 ounce fiberglass cloth to seal everything up. And the 10 ounce fiberglass cloth goes up onto a cleat that I put in that the cabin house overlaps onto. The cabin house was built on a Douglas fir frame that I faced with mahogany inside and out. So that pretty much covers the major repairs that I've done to the boat. And every year I do minor repairs. I've been on a sort of multi-year quest to get rid of all of the butt joints in the hull planking. And to do that, uh, I basically, when I find a butt joint that's getting a little punky, I cut out the bad wood on either side of the joint, take the butt block out, cut scarf joints into the plank ends, and then epoxy in a repair piece with matching scarfs to join the two old planks together and I'm using clear vertical grain Douglas fir, the, the highest ring count I can get to do that. So I've replaced most of the butt joints top sides and probably about half of them below the water line. And as I said, every year I do a few more. This spring I did six butt joints on the top sides, three to port, three to starboard, and got rid of them those last little weak parts. Replacing the butt joints with scarfed in joining pieces basically turns the planks that used to be say two planks ran the length of the boat into a single plank and that stiffens up the hull considerably because the butt joint is a point where the two planks can move relative to each other where they're simply held in place uh, by screwing into a butt block with say six or eight screws. The epoxy in joining piece is much stronger than a butt block and since they're usually about four to five feet long uh, they really stiffen the hull up quite a bit. Now one, uh, after doing structural repairs on the boat every year of course I repaint and, var and re-varnish all of the exterior wood every year. So that uh, takes a considerable amount of time. I think I spent about 200 hours working on the boat this spring. And, uh, you know, every year it varies from, say, a low of about 30 to 40 hours up to uh, a high on the year I rebuilt the side and aft decks in the cabin house of about 800 hours. So uh, that's what I'm doing with Tortuga every year for maintenance and the major things that I have done to the boat over the years. So that kind of summarizes uh, Tortuga right now, uh, where she came from, how big she is, and the work I've done on the boat and some of the continuing repairs I do on the boat every year. So. Hopefully you enjoyed finding out these details about Tortuga. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll get an indication of when my next video comes up. Thank you for watching.